I was so in love with you. Love is true. Love for you. Wasn't that enough for you? I would climb a mountain. I wouldn't want to see you fall. Rock climb for you and give you a reason for it all. You kept on thinking you were the only one. Too busy thinking love is a gun. <clears throat> It hit me like a slow bullet, like a slow bullet. It took me some time to realize it. You kept on thinking you were the only one oh <laughs> you busy thinking love is a gun i know the end be for the story's been told it's not that complicated but you're gonna need a bulletproof soul If you're wondering, yes, I opened this podcast with some sade in my ear. Because why not? I feel like my verbal, my social skills could be helped by any or should be improved, ought to be improved by any means necessary. And if that means a little bit of singing, I don't know how how impassioned that sound, but the goal is to be able to jump into that character that feels and I'm it's still going on in my earbuds now and I'm more so talking with the rhythm of what I'm listening to now it's like it's it's the fucking interlude so I'm just filling it with words and the more I speak the more my words become entombed into the music that I'm listening to and in that way, uh, a sense of, of passion comes across via the music through my words. Um, being able to do that on the fly in a conference room amongst a groups of people on stage in a courtroom, I feel that all becomes heightened in awareness a person experiencing that and able to able to simulate that able to stimulate that becomes that much more valuable and that's the kind of person i want to be my name is alex i'm yours truly the corporate cowboys intern and this podcast is uh, an homage to my past self who i I really wish I could go back and save, but that motherfucker is lost. And now here I am. It's just a cathartic means 
of expending energy, not even wasting it. I mean, it's not it's not disposable income like I could just do away with and not miss. No, I'm investing it by putting my energy into an outlet that others will come across one day. And however far my reach gets, however far this reach gets, because Corporate Cowboys isn't just a local variety. It's not just a regional happening. It won't even be nationwide. It'll be international. It'll be, it'll be, it's fucking corporate. Corporate is international. Corporate is everywhere. Corporate is the future. And the future is now. Today is the week of Monday, January 11th, 2020. And yes, I did say the week of. Like you would tell the difference. I mean, I'm using the same mic, mobile microphone setup in order to record these and publish them. So when I can, I'm going to try to do them all in one hit. If not, it's going to be multiple. But I'm not going to be telling you, oh, today's Tuesday. Today is Wednesday. That's just BS. What would you need to know? Like, there should be some marker of, you know, for date. For the dates that these are recorded or that they're published. But as far as like every... Every minute detailed, every corporate minute, no, that's that's more upper echelon. And uh, we're not we're not under that kind of scrutiny just yet. <laughs> Though we will be, no doubt, we'll be having to uh, manufacture corporate minutes. And when I say manufacture, um, I don't know. You could say fabricate or. Um, create but yeah manufacture but we don't have to do any of that just yet it doesn't fall in that category our activities at least um not on anybody's radar as far as i could tell if you're just joining uh, if this is like the first episode that you've come across and you've made it this far, you're like, who the fuck is this cat just singing and and BSing? This is this is all this is about. This is all this is about. This is a uh, more a social experiment, more a corporate experiment, a corporate experiment on my part and how I will be talking. Um, I know that there's already web scrapers um, AI scrapers, machine learnists, machines out there scraping my, my voice, studying it. Cool. They can have it. They can't have where it's coming from. But I'm working on improving my speech, pronunciation, my vocabulary, my vocabulary, my logical processes in order to become that much better of a speaker, become a more fluent thinker, a more fluid, a more fluid thinker. That's right, like water, be like water. (laughs) That's the goal of it. And I'm doing it in a cathartic manner. So you're gonna hear me fuck up. You're gonna hear me not retract that I'm hardly going to retract anything ever, but you're going to hear me, uh, walk things back and then walk them back forward ideas, um, syllogisms, whatnot. Why? Because I want to be sure that my steel trap works. (laughs) My steel trap. That reminds me, if you have a job and you're listening to this, if you're listening to this on the job, you ever thought about your job? I I don't know what kind of music you listen to on the way to work. I know that there are a bunch of uh, genres out there, Uh, rock, hip hop, rap, jazz. Um, But I saw this meme the other day of this person, I forget who it was, is it like Homer Simpson or somebody? 
just driving their car. Was it Flanders? It might have been Flanders because I think it would be more funny now that I think about it. But Flanders driving on maybe on their way to work, on their way to church, wherever the fuck they go when they drive. And the caption, the bottom text says, me on my way to work, on my way, on my way to my nine to five, listening to music about selling drugs, pimping bitches and killing fools. And um, it made me laugh. It made me laugh because that's the kind of mindset that people are in at work. If that's the kind of mindset you're in, hold on, it's not the kind of mindset you're in on the, on the drive there because, I mean, what, you got, you got a full-time? Would you have two full-times of nine to five and selling drugs on the side? Or you have two part-times at work and on the street? Um, no, but... I mean, it, it relates, it's relative, what you hear in songs, what you hear through music, it, it doesn't have to be replicated, it doesn't have to be duplicated, it doesn't have to be imitated, you don't have to go out on the street to sell drugs to know what it feels like to make a sale, you feel me? In order to make a sale, yes, there are habits, there are techniques, drugs, I mean shit, drugs and sex and violence every so now and then sells itself you don't have to promote it you don't you don't need a tactic in order to you know pull it out of your pocket and say you know this is some high grade right here it's higher grade and like you know like of the origin of where it comes from which if you ever question why why don't people know the origins um it has to do a lot less with with being stingy with the plug, it has to be a lot less. It has to do a lot less with being stingy with the plug than who the plug actually is. Where do drugs come from? <laughs> Funny ass shit. Anyways, corporate. That's not the answer. Though I, I can make the argument, but that's not the answer. It's not corporate. But corporate could be. What is it? Analogized to selling drugs could be analogized as selling drugs. You have product, you have product, right? Whether you're in retail, whether you're in service, whether you're in food, hospitality, whether you're in high tech, manufacturing, some type of industry, you have product that you're selling. And again, that could be like a literal product, something tangible, or it could be intangible, something like a service that you're selling. And you, as the representative, as the holder, as the one on the floor level, on the street, for lack of a better word, on the floor, you're a representative and you're trying to make this sale, but you need technique. You need, you need tact. You need logic. You need tact in order to make this sale. Why? Because you have competitors and they have... You, and they have materials, they have product of equal or lesser or greater quality, better quality, lesser or better, lesser or better quality than you might have. But it is possible for you to make a sale, even if yours doesn't, doesn't equate to theirs, even if yours isn't of equal quality, there is a possibility to make the sale. That's called the hustle. And hustlers have that kind of spirit. Hustlers can sell you gold medal flour for Coke. They just cover the outside in what, lidocaine or whatever the fuck they use now? And they'll ball it up and mush it together. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's some starch. Add some water, ball it up, lidocaine on the outside and say it's crack. Why? Because all, all you need is the appearance of product and that's... And that could be the least quality, right? I mean, if it just looks like it, but it's not it, that's on a scale of on a scale of shit quality to great, you know, primo A1. On on, on, a, on a scale, on a quality scale, it would be the least quality. Why? Because it's not, it's not legitimate product. It's not real. But hustlers still manage to make a sale. And there's logic there by overcoming a person's um what is it overcoming a person's suspicion 
that it's not legitimate product. So if you're a hustler and you are selling crack for the sake of argument, just for the sake of of this argument, for the sake of this um of this argument, if you are selling crack and it's not actual crack, you need the logic. Somebody's going to eyeball it first and it's got to look like crack so it overcomes any suspicion. But then you also need tact to not give away that it's not crack. I mean, it could, again, it could be whatever drug you are selling. And you can, you could, uh, what is it called? Fuck, what is it called? Knock off? You could knock off any drug? What are those called? Oh my goodness. You could, um, shit. You could scam, okay? So like, yeah, you could scam this drug. I forget, the word is escaping me right now. Remain calm, take a breath, even though it's escaping you and it is infuriating 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 even though it is infuriating it'll come to you at a later time and you'll get even more mad but you'll be happy <laughs> so what do you call when somebody fabricates a fraudulent goods oh there's a term for that process has to do with money, forging, not forging. Uh, fuck. I'll be right back. Hold on. The only word I could think of is counterfeit. Where you can counterfeit a product, right? Or pirate it. But that's the... That's the closest term concept that I could come up with now in terms of selling a faked product is counterfeiting. Selling a faked product because, yeah, I mean, I know drugs are stamped. I know, I, I mean, I don't know where they come from again. <clears throat> but yes, I get that drugs are stamped. They have a brand and they could be counterfeited and watered down or diluted or whatever the fuck. And you still need the logic. The logic is still pretty much there if it's not completely stomped on. The logic, overcoming somebody's logic is still there. Logic, Logical safeguards. Overcoming somebody's logical safeguards of, of just looking like a drug is still there. You can overcome it as, so long as it is not completely stomped the fuck down where it's, you know, 99% flour. And then the logical, I'm sorry, and then the, the tact. So the tact must still be there too. So it's a tactful maneuver. A tactical, a tactful, a tactful or tactical? Tactful or tactical? Tactful? I'll have to look that up, but you're essentially, you're engaging the person at the same time that you're overcoming their logical safeguard and assuring them, again, putting on that front um, to overcome whatever safeguards they might have, whatever concerns, whatever qualms they have about it not being legitimate in order for you to secure a sale. And in corporate, you do a lot of the same. Your product should speak for yourself. I mean, it's slightly more legitimate. It'll have uh, recognized, it might have recognized branding, a reputation to uphold, uh, quality standards, quality assurance. And so the logic is there. But then you need the tact as a salesperson, as a representative at, in any position. It could even be executives. Executives are always selling. Executives still need the tact in order to overcome the logic of even their subordinates. Otherwise, their subordinates will see them as food. I mean, you ever try to have a pet shark? You ever try? <laughs> you ever have? You ever try to? That's like the equivalent of a whale trying to keep sharks for pets. But whales are food, bro. Like with enough sharks around it, whales become food. With enough sharks around it, those sharks become piranhas, and 
with enough with enough motivation, whales become food. So executives are hustlers in their own right. Salespersons, representatives, uh, you know, any any member of the crew, they are hustlers in their own rights. So long as they think they are, so long as they have that mentality, so long as they're <laughs> driving to work, listening to music with that kind of um, with that kind of message, and again, it doesn't mean you have to go out and imitate it. It doesn't mean, and and I've I've went through that phase. I listened to a bunch of genres, a bunch of genres. I've listened to many genres before, from reggae to jazz, salsa, uh, yes, even world polka. I mean, I've listened to just about everything, and. I'm not going to say I have favorites. I mean, I don't. Every now and then I get on a kick and I'll just burn through a couple hours on a playlist uh, listening to it. If I'm if I'm being productive, I'm being productive. That's it. You can't tell me otherwise. You can't tell me I'm not being productive if I know I'm being productive. Otherwise, you'd have to prove it to me. You'd have to overcome my logic using tact. And that's a feat in itself. Everybody has those safeguards. Everyone has those safeguards. For some, um, they are not as serious as others. For some, they are not as severe. And um, yeah, some have, I mean, it, realistically, some folks have really low standards when it comes to logic and tact. I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. Uh, sometimes it's a good thing. If you are a hustler, you want your uh, um, prospect. I was going to say victim. <laughs> if you are a hustler, you want your prospect to have at least um, not the highest standards, like not not the highest standards, not unrealistic standards. If you are being a righteous hustler, if, if you're being a reasonable hustler, you, you know, you're doing it for a righteous cause. You want your prospect to have reasonable standards like this shit is doable. This shit is realistic. It's possible. You don't want them to say like, oh, I need I need impossible product. I don't need a one Coke. I need a two. I need a two plus like the shit doesn't exist. There's only 100% and maybe not even that because if it's 100% of a certain kind of drug, there's got to be some kind of counter there, – there's got to be some kind of counterproductive property to it, some kind of counterproductive attribute to it, which I'm sure some folks go out of their way. I'm sure some folks will go out of their way to procure impossible standards, but them being impossible – I mean, does it mean that it's not possible to, to, uh, hold on, not possible to, there's a word and it just escaped my mind. Not possible to, it doesn't mean it isn't possible to contemplate. It's just impossible to make, uh, constantly. Is it constantly or consistently? It's not feasible. It's not feasible economically, socially even. Why? Because if you are the only one with these impossible standards, let's put it this way, you're going to be disappointed. You might hate life. I've been there before. Not hating life. I mean, I love life. I love death too. But I've had high enough standards where I became disappointed with folks who were at just really good. And and hustling them, even hustling them felt like a joke. Like it's not supposed to be this easy, it, you know, and it's fucking disappointing because we're all supposed to be professionals, always on guard, always, always have that hustler's mentality where, you know, yes, it is possible to hustle hustlers. It is possible to hustle hustlers. It is possible to deal to dealers. It is possible to kill killers. That's where... That's where art comes from. That's where music comes from. That's where rap, rock, hip hop, that's where it all comes from. It's just being better. Being better. Ultimately, that should be the goal of corporate. As a corporate cowboy, what, you think I want to deal with, with novices, with amateurs? No, not at all. And it's easy. It's not. 
the hardest to identify who was a novice, who was an amateur. But at the same time, their standards, whether they're new, inexperienced, fresh to the game, their standards might likely be high. So good luck trying to hustle them. To some, it's innate. It's like, it's almost an innate characteristic. They don't have to come from a family of hustlers or like their culture doesn't have to be based in negotiation and, and, and you know, pimping and pandering kind of thing. Like it doesn't have to come to that. Individuals themselves can have individual standards. And you see that with folks who break quote unquote generational curses. There's folks who who turn their lives around after a life of crime or, or you know, a life of, of drug abuse and, and sin. They turn their lives around. And so they acquire new standards. Digging into these standards um, requires interaction, obviously, requires the requires knowledge on how to um, on how to get this information, how to acquire this information, how to collect this information without without calling suspicion onto yourself. Like a hustler, <laughs> like a hustler, you got to use your own logic, your own tact in order to find where another's position is, where another person's position is, where their logic and tact end and yours might begin or yours ends and theirs might begin. Because, I mean, uh, real hustlers will recognize real hustlers. Real recognize real. If you get hustled or if you're about to get hustled or you recognize hustle, you got to recognize that shit. Even, you know, if it's better or worse than yours, the goal is to be better. So, I mean, if, if it's worse than yours, you can hustle them in a manner that improves them and, you know, doesn't outright destroy them and puts a fucking target on your back. Benny Blanco status. And if they're better than you, you can still come out winning. And that's premised, that's conditional on, you know, the better hustler, whoever you recognize to be better, the better hustler being the better person, being the better hustler in order to improve uh, relationships, in order to improve corporate, in order to be, you know, in, in order to remain a corporate cowboy. Because, yeah, corporate cowboys can get hustled. Corporate cowboys can get knocked off. You know, it's a fucking cycle. This shit is never ending. You're only in it until you're not. <laughs> what was I? What was I going to add? That's right. Bulletproof soul. It's what you need, ultimately, to be a hustler of any kind on the street in corporate on the street corner, in the corner office. You need a bulletproof soul. And it takes time, man. It takes time to get the right materials, to get the right metal. M-E-T-T-L-E, -E, metal. To acquire the right metal. To get your fucking metal tested, you gotta have, you gotta have that spirit you got to have that want you got to have that need that need that needs fulfilling to get that bulletproof soul no doubt you're going to be slinging bullets too you're going to be slinging points killing killing careers killing ideas that aren't up to snuff that aren't on par with with what you might have as your standard for logic intact. But so goes the game. So goes the game. You need a bulletproof soul to play. The end. <laughs> you need sharp, you need sharp instruments, sharp implements, logic intact. So you need shit that's either quick or shit that's smooth. You need to be able to sling lead, use knives. And you got to couple that with some armor, some safeguard, a bulletproof soul. 
It's only fair, it's only fair that you play fair and everyone has a different definition. Every hustler has a different definition, but ultimately the principle is that um, everyone has equal opportunity. Everyone has equal opportunity. As far as outcomes and results go, I mean, those are those are always different. Everyone will experience different results. Why? It has to do with their with their will, with their will to be <clears throat> hustlers, I suppose. And I don't want to use hustlers like like it's a good or a bad thing. It's just another it's just another vehicle. It's just another medium for getting the message across, pushing the envelope. I used to call um I used to call really good ideas, like ideas that you can make projects out of, ideas that you can that you can almost tantalize that you could almost manifest and make tangible ideas that you could carry. I used to call them initiatives. And, um, you know, partners and I, we'd always have these initiatives and how we wanted to, uh, to run them as a game on our managers, <laughs> on our supervisors. This is back when we were young, young guns, subordinates still. And uh, we were reporting to higher ups but we had initiatives that we want to take place in the workplace, in the office, in, you know, in the organization, wherever we were, because I did it in more than one place. But we had initiatives that we wanted to run. So we ran them as plays, kind of like playing a game, but we ran them like hustlers in tandem or in a, in a little team. Like, like the fucking corporate cowboys that we were then. We would run them, and um, in these initiatives, we were able to uh, to spearhead. I mean, there's always a, a point, man, and then you have support. Otherwise, um, you have multiple leaders, and you definitely can have more than one point, man, as long as you guys are working as equals. And in that way, uh, liability and risk is evenly distributed, so there are no weak points in in your initiative and this ensures this ensures that uh the initiative goes as smoothly as you are capable of hustling and that's all it is hustle doesn't hustle doesn't mean cheating out of uh hustle doesn't mean cheating <laughs> hustling doesn't mean nefarious activity it doesn't always mean that Hustle isn't always working skullduggery in a corporate setting, though it can implicate that. It definitely, it definitely can implicate that. It definitely can involve some skullduggery, and it happens. It happens more often than not. Um, but that's just that. That comes back to the will of man comes back to the will of men and few to the will of humans, I guess I'll say, because yeah, men and women, um, they've got their own personal interests and special interests that gets in the way of being consummate professionals, of being corporate cowboys, of being better, of being better at their work. And so they end up getting bested. They end up getting busted on they end up <laughs> they, had, they end up getting pushed over they end up getting rolled they end up getting buried lives i mean careers taken livelihoods lost and ultimately lives i guess i mean if we're being real <laughs> You're going to need a bulletproof soul. I feel like this is a good way for me to 
to let out whatever's whatever's pent up, whatever I think I'll fuck up on in the conference room or in not in court or in negotiations. I can just let it out now. Obviously, I'm not going to let out anything uh, proprietary or uh, too secretive items that we need for trade or or a craft of some kind. Nah, I mean, it, n- nothing nothing crazy. I mean, we don't use anything otherworldly. We don't use anything otherworldly. There you go. We don't use anything otherworldly. But uh, tools of the trade, literally anything can be a tool of the trade. When you're talking about a hustle, and when, when you're talking about the world being a stage, anything is a prop. Anything is a paperweight. Anything is a tool of the trade. Uh, Papers, pencils, flowers, fake flowers, vases, knives, guns, staplers, scissors, all that. All that. Tools of the trade. And as a hustler, using logic and tact, using logic and tact, it's how you create yourself. That's how you legitimize yourself as a corporate cowboy. And it takes time. Obviously, it takes time to acquire a reputation. You can't just walk into a room and expect folks to know you. But there will come a time. There will come a time when you step into a room and folks you've never dealt with already know what you're about. And um, it, it's eerie. It really is. It's eerie because I've um, I've I've experienced it before. I've borne witness to um, to that kind of treatment. And I'm not gonna say it's good or bad or it's bittersweet. It's just different. It's just another level to the hustle. It's how you maneuver yourself in a room full of people where half of them half of them might know you and the other half are getting informed. The other half are learning actively. Who do you deal with first? Well, obviously you can, I mean, if you're a consummate professional, if your ethics don't change, if folks know you for the corporate cowboy that you are, the logic and tact that you keep on your belt i.e., I don't know, your gun, your knife. If they know that you're about... (laughs) Hold on, before I say something reckless. (laughs) If they know you are about better, if they know you are about being better, that kind of reputation is worth 100 times its perceivable weight in gold obviously you can't you can't hold the reputation in your hands but you can definitely hold it in your mind you can contemplate it you can you can address it you can interact with it that's a brand that's your brand that's your reputation that's your livelihood but it's just being a corporate cowboy it's like joining a gang you never it's like joining a gang you were never initiated into. That's all it is. Being a corporate cowboy. Not some corporate cowboy shit. That's some corporate cowboy shit. Who the fuck is this corporate cowboy? <laughs> that motherfucker is a corporate cowboy. I'm gonna add that into. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to integrate that. Is it integrate that? I'm gonna try to incorporate that. But how do I scale it up? I'm gonna try to promote that. I'm gonna try to infiltrate that. I'm gonna. How do I say? I'm going to try to make it a household name, but I mean, it's not a name. It's a concept. It's like a, 
wanting to make it common parlance. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm going to try to propagate that. I'm going to try, yeah, essentially, I'm going to try to promote that. I'm going to try to propagate that. The other day, um, I know we were just talking about Sade and having a bulletproof soul. But the other day, we, I was talking to um, an associate of mine. And we were talking about uh, the street code, just like the criminal code or the prison code. And how much more rigid, how much more structured, like really, and, and not, not structured or rigid. How much more strict? Is, it, is that the word I'm looking for? Fuck. How much more consistent? Let's put it that way. How much more consistent it is than work in corporate, than policy, than corporate policy. Because, and that's not to say that there aren't bad criminals. That's not to say that in in every organization, and like, I don't know, what's a good example? That's not to say in like in a prison gang, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna incriminate myself with any of these organizations. I mean, come on, I got. I got folks. <laughs> um, that's not to say in like some criminal organization, there aren't good and bad people in it either. Okay. It's just that the consequences of fucking up in an already criminal organization are that much more severe than in just your common, everyday, publicly traded corporation. <laughs> You can be scum in a corporation, but you cannot in a criminal organization. And that's not to say, again, that's not to say that corporations cannot be criminal organizations. Yeah, there's, there's, but again, there's good and bad. I'm just saying that the severity for fucking up, the severity of the consequences for fucking up in an already, like in an overtly criminal organization where running drugs, game, and guns, and I guess running drugs, game, and weapons is um, the severity of fucking up in a game like that is is, uh, fatal. It's fatal. The severity of the consequences for fucking up in a um, overtly, the severity of the consequences for fucking up in a game that is overtly criminal are fatalistic. And that can't be said working in corporate. In corporate, you have spineless motherfuckers who think they are barrel-chested when they're really not. What you want to do is introduce them to the gauge in the parking lot. But you're a professional, you feel me? You're a professional, you gotta do things professionally before you result. You have to do things, you have to attempt to do things professionally, being a consummate professional always. I remember when I was younger, I always used to say, I'm I'm an aspiring professional. You know how folks say, I'm an aspiring artist, I'm an aspiring model. I just wanted to be professional, dude. I I just wanted to be professional. I wanted to be respected and and you know get get paid get paid in kind with the respect that I pay. Because yeah, you can pay dues and just get stepped the fuck all over. Just get stepped the fuck all get get stepped all the fuck over. <laughs> you can get stepped all the fuck over. But you gotta demand again, you have to demand respect. Because there will be some spineless scum in corporate who are going to step all the fuck over you. And if you don't demand respect, there's no consequences for it. Because ultimately, that's your will that's being trampled. That's, that's your will to be trampled. That's your logic intact being trampled on as if it is worthless. As if, it, as if, 
As if fucking you over wasn't fatalistic. As if fucking you over wasn't fatal. <laughs> oh, shit. And yeah, a lot of... Uh, a lot of themes will be recurring in this podcast. And like I said, it's just a way for me to get across the points, the values that I wish were imparted on me much earlier on. So if my younger self ever finds a way to uh, time travel into the future to hear this shit. <clears throat> I'm sorry. If my younger self should find the means to time travel into the future and hear this podcast catch a snippet or two i hope they understand that i did it all for them i did it all for for the progeny i will never see (laughs) and i'm doing so i'm having fun doing it remaining always calm always cool always collected sometimes impassioned other times enthusiastic but I don't, I don't ever want you to think that I'm going off of the rails. If I'm speaking reckless, it's because, it's because to me reckless is 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 nothing. I'm I'm passive about it. Folks talk about being passive aggressive. I'm just passive assertive. I'm just passive passive. I'm passively passive. So much so I'm I'm passive about life. I'm passive about death. It's, it's nothing. I'll write the book later. I'll write the manual later. I'll write the manuscripts later. When the organization reaches critical mass, at least in my lifetime, for my life expectancy, and and there will come a time, it'll be legitimized. It'll be, um, (laughs) uh, I'm hoping, incorporated actually chartered and ran um, in governance to natural law and governance to corporate law. That's, that's, it's all possible. It's all possible, but it starts uh, now with just getting it out there, getting, I, I, I definitely do believe in, in um, speaking words to speaking, what is it? How does that go? Speaking words to power, manifesting reality. So long as the words are out there in the sphere, so long as the words are out there in the ether, so long as I'm putting those vibrations, as I'm as so long as I'm accessing those parts of my brain to verbalize into the universe, just know that my ideas aren't new. You see? Because I've already said it. And now you're thinking about it and you're wondering how many others think like this? How many others think this way? Maybe not concretely like mine. Maybe not exactly like mine. But this way? Yes. Yes, this way. (laughs) How many folks think with that mindset of being a hustler and would like to upgrade the product they hustle from something on the street corner to something in the corner office. And I've met folks who've came off of the street corner. I've met folks who've gotten their stripes doing dirt. And I've been fortunate enough, I have been fortunate enough to call them homies as they've called me homies, to call them partners, to call them associates as they've called me as such. And, um, and I didn't see I didn't see one clearly return to the streets that I know of or that they would tell me. I definitely get what the rush is to be running, to be ripping and running and, and, and just just appreciating the risk. I get it. Some folks are adrenaline junkies and that lifestyle, it's, a, it's appealing. It's attractive. It's alluring. When you're in that mode... When you're in that mode of living, knowing that any day, any day you could go out, so you got the fucking thing on you, 
that's I mean, yeah, I, I, I get it. It's it's a rush. My the hair on my body stands on end right now. Just thinking about it. But the same shit goes down in corporate. It's just you have a lot more softer prospects. You have a lot more softer victims. And the prospects, the victims I'm thinking about aren't the customer, aren't the consumers. They're literally your managers. They're literally your executives. <laughs> Why? Because you're the hustler. We are the hustlers. Sharks. We are the corporate cowboys. So you be the corporate cowboy. You be the hustler. Find others like yourself. Associate and incorporate those associates. Get it? Now incorporating associates. Be corporate cowboys together. Run your own initiatives. And hustle corporate, man. Hustle corporate. Put your plans into action. Obviously, they should be righteous. If your company is doing right by you, you should be doing right by your company because, you know, loyalty is royalty. Good begets good. Better begets better. Should beget better. Better should beget better. But inevitably, you will face a bottleneck for uh, somebody who doesn't want to move, somebody who doesn't want to budge, someone who's settled and is for lack of a better word, on their way out because they're afraid of the risk. They've grown afraid of the life. They've, they just want to, they, they don't want to just be left alone. They don't want change. They don't want innovation. They're afraid of what comes next. And my guy, you, you got to be what comes next. You have to be, you have to want to be what comes next. And those are some, some heavy shoes to fill. Those are some heavy shoes to run in. Those are some fucking boots you got to use to kick conference doors down. That's the game. That's the game in corporate. When you're the point man or you have point men, that's that's what you file behind. That That's all it is. It's just the ever... The never ending? No, the ever. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The ever advancing. The ever, what is it? The ever advancing battle to the top. The ever advancing battle to be better. And there is no top, there is no best. Why? Because even the best degrades over time. Even even the best minds deteriorate and fall by the wayside. Sorry, fall by the wayside. Even the best minds deteriorate and fall by the wayside. They get retired. They get taken out. They get hit with a cancer ray or whatever the fuck conspiracy you guys got going on right now it's all corporate it's all corporate nothing should be surprising nothing should surprise you at this point the shit you've seen in the street or the shit you hear go down in the street in the music you listen to on your drive to work come on nothing should surprise you because it's just like it it's just like it just in an office building, just in corporate, that's all. Just in society, just in politics, just like that. It's nothing new. This thing, this politicking, poly tricking, it's nothing new. It's been going on since before Julius got shanked in the back. <laughs> Yo, it's been going on before that cat. That's it. It's been going on before that cat. It'll never end. Maybe somebody had maybe somebody had a better idea than him. Maybe somebody had a worse idea than him. But they had better tact to overcome good logic. You feel me? There's good and bad logic. There's good and bad tact. They must have had some better tact to overcome good logic. Whether or not Julius Caesar was a righteous 
emperor didn't fucking protect him. I mean, he might have had a bulletproof soul, but his body wasn't stab proof. <laughs> as history as history has recorded for us. <laughs> So yeah, it's part of the game. It's part of the game. When you enter the game and when you play, you play to win. And if you should lose, you should game over. I mean, very rarely can you restart when you hit rock bottom. When you hit rock bottom, you're six feet under, pretty much. Or you're cremated, however you want to be disposed of. However you want your, your physical body to be disposed of. But that should be rock bottom for you. Every day you're alive is, is what, what Mel Bernstein say. Every day above ground is a good day. Or every dog has its day. Some bullshit like that out of Scarface. But you got to graduate from that. You got to graduate from, from the street to fucking corporate. Why? I mean, yeah, it is, all inter- it is all interconnected. Where do drugs come from? Question mark. It is all interconnected, but you want to graduate from the street to something with an organization, to something with backing, to something where you can make moves with a group that thinks like you, to something that you can make move with individuals in, 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 in a decentralized fashion who think like you. How scary you think that is to motherfuckers who want to centralize power. Imagine having... <laughs> imagine, imagine you being... An evil motherfucker, right? And you love having control over every aspect of your organization, over the movements, over every movement of every individual under your control, every subordinate at your beckoning call. You see how much of a threat a corporate cowboy would be in that scenario? (laughs) Ah, shit. But you have to have gab. Obviously, you have to be a hustler. You have to know how to employ logic and tact. And it starts with those right next to you. It starts with those you work shoulder to shoulder with. And it doesn't have to be manual labor. It definitely could be. It doesn't have to be unionizing. It definitely could be. But, I mean, that's that's a mob within a mob. I don't know. I don't know how effective that'll be or how easy it'll how easy it'll be on your head in terms of headaches and the whole fucking heavy is the crown bullshit. Heavy is the head. I know it's heavy as the head, but really it's just the crown that's heavy. There's just some light headed motherfuckers out there who turn out to be spineless and so the crown is heavy and so they rationalize it as oh heavy is the head. I'd be more than happy to relieve them of the crown. More than happy. I mean, I'm not going to put the fucking crown on, but I'd be more than happy to relieve the crown of their head. (laughs) That's some corporate cowboy shit, bro. Why? Because we do it moving. We do it moving and we keep it moving. It's just to be better. It's just to be better. I'm not even looking to be the best. In fact, I would rather be second best. I know because as soon as the best falls from glory, as soon as the best falls out of fashion, I'm next up. Always next up. You always want to be next up. And to do so, you have to be second best in order to be better. Always. Always. Be better. And to do that, to keep it moving, to never have a target on your back... Yeah, you have to you have to remain righteous. You want to have to you want to have your team come up with you, whoever you consider your team. You want to have your peers, your associates move with you. And um, yeah, I mean, if some want to if some want to step out and smell the flowers and start a family. You want to hope that they start their family and inculcate them with the same themes, the same values, the very integrity which with they work, you hope that they raise their family 
and develop a strong a strong posterity a strong what is it well that's that's a legend a strong legacy legacy that was the word and keep a strong legacy because there are uh, some legacies out there that aren't strong at all i mean they're just the shell of a last name <laughs> the fucking shell of a last name and it's embarrassing it's embarrassing I mean, I'm all for respecting legacy, but as soon as somebody doesn't live up to their legacy, not pushing it to be better, uh, not yeah, not pushing it to be the best, because they want to be better than the best. They always want to be. They always want to be good. They want to be on the right, and that's for everyone's sake. But if they're just, if they're, if they think they can game game life like game the system if they think they can extract and not contribute that's embarrassing it's embarrassing because they unwittingly put a paint a target on their back they unwittingly paint a target on their back and i don't know if i've said this before but i i would love to be in a position where i'm able to handle millions because i I know now what I want to do with the money. I obviously don't have the resources with which to with which to invest or or you know handle what is it? Manage to manage money right now. I don't have the resources to be managing. But I will. And I know now what I want to do with them. And I'll probably drop those ideas here when they when the time comes. I mean, when it's appropriate, I don't want to like have every episode just be a, a detailed journal of what my life is like, what it has been and what I'm looking to do. Like when it's appropriate, I'll I'll dive into um, a topic and how I see it can be fixed and how it could be fixed for the benefit of of everyone playing of, of, of everyone playing the game of everyone um of everyone, hold on, hold on. I have a funny one for this one. For everyone converting to corporate. That's right. Converting to corporate. Again, and it's just to improve corporate. If you want to look up what corporate means, go look up the word corporate means. Go look up what the word corporate means. What's uh, what it's what's its origin and its roots and its root words. Do that for me, and if you don't want to improve that, then that's on you. So, but I mean, there's folks every day who, who, who love the idea of government and haven't looked it up. What it what that means? What government means? What its origin is? What its root words are? But hey, that's it's beyond me, right? It's beyond me. I'm just here. I'm just here doing some honest work. It ain't much. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Fucking 230 grams at a time. <laughs> oh shit. I don't know. I haven't I haven't weighed I haven't weighed a bullet in a minute. I haven't seen I haven't seen how much um how big they are. 230 grains? 230 grams? Frangible or not. You got it I? Frangible or not. Um, I think I might end it here pretty soon, but I really liked how this one went. I know I had to cut once or twice and then come back, but you know, I had to do it all the same day. I don't like leaving things undone. I like them being complete. It's my own OCD. It's my own form of... OCD, I guess, my own form of um, <clears throat> of autism. Which that's actually a funny topic. Maybe I'll, I'll name the next one that the spectrum, the spectrum, and being able to um, to record these and then publish them. 
I think it's been great, honestly. I don't have a better means of getting this out there. I know I could write it down. I know I could sit down and write it out. I know I could and I will. But as of right now, I do a lot of sitting and a lot of reading. So I'm able to get up, walk around a little bit, stretch, and um, just elaborate on some ideas that I come across. Today, it just happened to be Bulletproof Soul. And I know that's meant to be in the context of a love song. And to me, I think at the end of the day, love and hate is... um, are um, are a blurred what is it are blurred opposites hold on there's it's a blurred line between love and hate and uh, there's so many words in between the two that that's it in itself is a spectrum but I've heard it more often than not folks say oh I love this or oh I hate that and they're overused. They haven't a clue what the word love means, what the word hate means. And um, and um, many will um, many will disregard their very natural feelings, or self medicate, or run off and and get only one professional opinion. I mean, I'm not knocking. If you have to take medication or or you have to seek therapy, again, this is my own form right here, is being able to think through my arguments, my ideas, my logic, using tact and finding whether or not they sound sound, finding whether or not they are sound when I verbalize them whether or not I would tell somebody this face to face and I have almost every almost everything I've spoken about I've told or I've spoken about I've conversed and discussed with others face to face so nothing I'm saying I mean it might be taboo some of the topics I I speak on here might be taboo to folks in your circle to folks in your office to folks in your workplace that shit all might be taboo but not to me not to me using logic using tact there's ways to introduce even the most taboo items into somebody's life into into life i mean and 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 it happens even at larger scales look at what's happening to society in general. I mean, just the direction society moves in. It doesn't and it, it doesn't move all in one direction. It moves in various directions. And there are agents, change agents, agents you might consider cowboys. Maybe they're not corporate cowboys. They could be good or bad, right? So yeah, they could be corporate cowboys. And if and if I should have the if I should have the chance of meeting them one day, the opportunity to meet them one day and get them on for an initiative might come out shaking hands or come out exchanging hands. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Cause I'm not there yet. I'm not at that level. I'm just doing what I can in my own small corner of the world. And yes, it is my corner of the world. If you've ever um, if you've ever taken the angle at which your eyes capture this thing called life, the angle at which your eyes capture life, the very center of your forehead, maybe like two inches or three inches in, is your corner. <laughs> and that's all you can change. That's all you can change. What you can see is what you can change. What you can consider is what you can change. That's things within your contemplation you can change. You just have to have the will, approach it logically, approach it tactfully. Tactically? Tactically? Tactfully? Fuck. I have to to make certain of that word. 
Let me look it up real quick. Tactfully, definition, adverb, with skill and sensitivity in dealing with others or with difficult issues. And yeah, life is hard. Death is easy. So approach life tactfully. Tactically? Tactically. Tactically. Tactically in a way that relates to actions carefully planned to gain a specific end. Hmm. You could actually use either or logic and tact because tactically uh, you do also have to address sensitive portions of an objective in order to achieve them. And then tactfully, you just have to not fuck up. <laughs> you have to not fuck them up. You have to not fuck up the mission. You have to not fuck up the vision. That's all there is to it. That was a solid ending. Talk to you guys later.